Hello, and welcome to the BewareCast. In this video, we'll be taking a look at every single species to appear on Darwin 4 from Wayne Barlow's 1990 speculative biology work, Expedition. For the sake of brevity, I have omitted most of Darwin 4's flora, with a few exceptions, and will be concentrating on the fauna present on this amazing alien world. We'll go through them all in alphabetical order, but before we get started, I'd like to ask that you please hit the like button, as it really helps out with getting this video recommended to people, and if you end up enjoying this video, then please do subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of future uploads. Thank you. First, we have the Aerophyte. This is the name given to millions of minuscule photosynthetic organisms that spend their whole lives floating in the atmosphere of Darwin IV, sometimes darkening the skies with their numbers. Along with tiny faunal organisms known as microflyers, they act much like the plankton in Earth's oceans, providing a vast food source for the giant Darwinian flying beasts. Amoebic Sea the amoebic sea is a vast, gelatinous superorganism blanketing about 5% of the surface of Darwin IV. It is the largest single colony organism known. The sea is also home to a variety of organisms, the most famous of which is the gargantuan biped, known as the Emperor Sea Strider. Among the other, much smaller inhabitants of the sea, there are flying creatures like the disc flyers, the stripe wings, and the sea striders nymphs. There are also a large number of lesser known symbiotic organisms living beneath the surface within the gel. Arctic polar vein. Arctic polar veins are plants that inhabit the polar region of Darwin IV. They rotate, feeding on energy produced from solar winds from Darwin's two suns. Arctic sedge slider. The Arctic sedge sliders are massive organisms, bipeds standing 10 metres or 33 feet tall, and adapted to life in the cold, polar environments of their homeworld. They are bipedal, dragging themselves along with their two front legs, while supporting themselves in the rear with a central skid. Their name originates from the furrows that their skids leave in their path. As a way to survive the cold, they utilise a specialised adaptation. Whenever the temperature drops, or a fierce arctic storm approaches along the horizon, they can retract their head deep into their warm body cavity, only extending it again once conditions have become favourable, again. Their species is notable for having what may be the biggest sonar bulge of any fauna on Darwin IV. This massive organ produces sonar pings in not one, but multiple frequencies. Also, as this bulge is situated on their back, it gives the species the ability to see in 360 degrees, which makes it far more difficult for a would-be predator to catch one. The Arctic Triped Alien This is a species native to the Arctic regions of Darwin IV. The Arctic Strider The Arctic Strider is a bipedal species native to the Arctic regions of Darwin IV, they are known to store fat in their legs. Arrow Tongue The arrow tongue gets its name from a retractable appendage on its mouth that it uses to attack and subdue prey, which pierces the victim's skin and injects digestive juices into the body. As with other liquivorous species, the victim's insides liquefy, at which point the arrow tongue uses its 8 metre long appendage to suck it out for sustenance. They stand and walk about on a single pair of large, muscular, two-toed legs. They also have two muscular limbs coming out of their sides and facing backwards. These limbs can be pulled forward to make the arrow tongue look bigger, whether to scare away a possible threat, or as a courtship display. For personal defence outside of hiding amongst electrophyte colonies, they have developed a symbiotic relationship with some unspecified microscopic organism, allowing them to utilise bioluminescence. These bioluminescent patches are aligned on their backs, and are used when attempting to frighten away intruders. Most often, 
they can be spotted concealing themselves amongst beds of electrophytes, where they take advantage of this colonial fauna's electrical discharges to discourage herds from getting too close to them. Beach Lopers Beach lopers are a bipedal organism indigenous to Darwin IV and are a distant peripheral cousin to the immense Emperor Sea Strider. Their facial trunk has been stated as being vaguely reminiscent of that of the elephant on Earth. They have light blue biolites on their back. They generally frequent around the beach of the amoebic sea, using their trunk to catch and eat small flyers and floaters such as sea strider larvae. Beach quills Beach quills are spike-like ambush predators with a short-ranged attack indigenous to the planet Darwin IV. They are also some of the smallest creatures to be found on the planet. They live in huge colonies within the littoral zone, which can be up to a million strong, where they lie in wait for an organism to step near. Once one inevitably does, they will launch themselves into the hide of their prey by the hundreds, propelling themselves with enormous velocity over short distances by means of a folded, muscular foot, which snaps the animal through the concealing undergrowth their colonies camouflage themselves in. At this point, they will inject their prey with neurotoxins, stunning the victim so that the quills may burrow into its flesh, only to later emerge and rebury itself. Their colonies are so potent that, despite being so small in comparison to other species on the world, they can bring down even the greatest beings, such as the grove back, often causing them to suffer a slow and painful death. The Beach Dweller a triped alien that lives along the beaches of the amoebic sea. Beach Runner These are long-legged biped aliens. They dwell in the littoral zone around the amoebic sea. Virtually nothing more is known about this species, but their name and anatomy strongly indicate cursorial habits. They get their name from their habit of dashing along beaches. The Beach Finger the beach finger is a grass-like plant that grows among Darwin IV's beaches, colonising areas that were previously covered by the slowly receding amoebic sea. They're described as extremely slow-growing succulents, and exist in at least three colour varieties – lavender, pink, and brown. The belly thrower – a fierce predator that ejects its stomach from its oral sphincter and throws it over its prey like a net then pulls it in slowly, digesting its unfortunate victim as it struggles to get free. Bladderhorns These are life forms that live on Darwin IV's mountain ranges. Solitary and aggressive creatures, they wander the mountain passes and high plains where they feed upon the subsurface bulbs of alpine flora. They are highly territorial, and if one encounters another, they will perform an elaborate ritualistic duel, which involves ramming heads and showing off their bioluminescent patches. During mating season, the chilly air is rent with the sounds of their bellowing, an eerie, almost haunting bellowing call which is created by the inflation and subsequent deflation of their antler bladders air sacs, for which they are named. Their species is oddly a bright blue colour, giving them a rather comical appearance. Their antler bladders are often inflated to make themselves appear to be larger than they actually are, which can be used to frighten away predators or rival bladder horns. They have very compact bodies, with a large hump on their back. Their antlers are connected to the sides of their head, while their mouths are asymmetric. On the right side is a tentacle-like appendage, presumably lifting food to the long, thin mouth on the left side. Bladderhorns do not have tails, merely a short spike jutting out in the place where their tail would be. A short, thin phallus hangs below their tail spike. Bolt Tongue a polar cousin of the arrow tongue, the bolt tongue is a Darwinian predator which uses a large arrow-tipped appendage to kill its prey. The bolt's tongue possesses a sonar bulge in the form of an arch on the top of its head, which, like all predators on Darwin IV, it uses to locate its prey. Unlike the closely related arrow tongue, the bolt tongue has a more closed tongue sheath, along with a thinner tongue. Butcher Tree Butcher trees are sessile organisms indigenous to Darwin IV. 
While many species prey on the numerous and fast-breeding prismalope, butcher trees are the only species to actually lure the prismalope instead of giving chase, although they also feed on the great skewers as well. Dotting the plains of the planet's northern hemisphere, it will kill anything that comes within its attack range with its four branch daggers. They possess a bizarre symbiotic relationship with a currently unnamed aerial organism, which happens to be the primary food source of the prismalopes. On the butcher tree's side, it grows subterranean roots that resemble these flyers, allowing the tree to lure prismalopes close enough to kill them. It is unknown exactly what the small flyers get out of this symbiosis, but it is likely that they receive relatively increased safety. If they were to flock near a butcher tree, they'd be less likely to be successfully preyed upon, since the prismalope might instead go for what are actually roots. The species' reproductive processes are unknown. One possibility is that the small flyer it associates with transfers eggs and sperm between individuals, in a similar manner to how a bee would pollinate flowers. Another possibility is that the flyer itself is the second gender of the species, an extreme form of sexual dimorphism. Either way, young butcher trees are found close to their parent and are connected to them through an umbilical cord similar to that of the growths that mimic the flyers. The cord disappears once the young are capable of nourishing themselves. The Carver Wing, a flying animal native to this planet. Cliff Polyps Cliff polyps are small, plant-like organisms that grow on the cliffs and hillsides of Darwin IV's equatorial mountains. It reproduces by spores and serves as a valuable food source for tripedal herbivores such as the Spring Wing and the Crag Springer. Crag Springer Crag Springers are diurnal, gregarious creatures and spend most of their time foraging on the cliff sides, feasting on screeweeds and cliff polyps. Though their body armour serves as effective protection against predators, many end up being killed by the frequent avalanches and rock slides which plague their natural habitat. The Crag Springer is a wingless relative of the Spring Wing, which inhabits the equatorial mountain ranges of Darwin IV. Despite not being able to glide like its relative, the Crag Springer excels as a leaper, being able to accomplish over 20 meter long jumps without difficulty. Dagger Wrist Dagger wrists are aggressive, human sized, arboreal, liquivorous carnivores. They utilize patagia, thin membranes of skin, to allow them to glide between trees, which is stretched between their front and back legs. Spines along their back aid in this gliding by providing them with extra agility, but they also serve the function of rearward defence. They also use powerful muscles in their legs to allow them to make great leaps to maximise the distance they can cross on each glide. Like many other species on Darwin IV, they utilise bioluminescent lights. Their species are quite clever in the catching of their prey. Their forelimbs are shaped like pitons or scythes and are used not only for climbing, hanging and swinging on branches while up high, they are also used to make kills. Their main prey are the trunk suckers, which are attracted to the large holes in the Darwinian trees that they create due to the strength and sharpness of the dagger wrist's forelimbs. The trunk suckers come up for bleeding sap, which is exactly what the dagger wrists want them to take. Once their prey has consumed enough sap, they descend upon it. Unlike most of Darwin IV's predatory creatures, daggerists have what appear to be a lower jaw, although it is in fact a portion of their skull which detaches from the rest of the face to stab its victims and inject the necessary digestive enzymes. Daggerists prefer trunk suckers in order to consume the sap that their prey has fed on only moments earlier, making them, in effect, omnivorous. Disc Flyers These are small flying creatures. Their mouth is located on the underside of their disc-shaped bodies. They probably propel themselves through the air by combusting methane gas in jet pods, like other flying creatures on the planet, such as the skewers. Disc flyers live in or around the amoebic sea region. 
Sometimes they land on the sea surface to rest and feed on the jelly-like substance that composes it. Although disc flyers live and fly in large groups, they are territorial creatures. Each group operates in a distinct 4 km square territory. It is unknown whether young disc flyers remain in their territory in which they are born, or leave to find their own territory and possibly start their own group. Ebony Blisterwing With a wingspan of over 300 meters, the Ebony Blisterwing is the largest airborne creature of Darwin IV. Like its name suggests, the Ebony Blisterwing is dark brown in color and has large methane-filled gas bladders on its wings and body in order to stay aloft. It also has what Barlow describes as twin tail booms. The diet of this majestic being is unknown. It probably feeds on the millions of microscopic organisms that spend their lives floating in the skies of Darwin IV. It is also possible that the Blisterwing is able to perform photosynthesis, absorbing sunlight through its dark skin. Emperor Sea Strider Their name comes from their ability to walk across the surface of the organic seas at yielding surface, which, despite their large stature, is accomplished quite easily through the utilization of a framework which places their center of mass around their mouths and feet and lower leg portions with the lightest part being the top of the body. This allows them to maintain a mass light enough to not rupture the membrane of the amoebic sea, and yet retain enough mass to not topple over in the storms that are commonplace in the regions to which they are indigenous. Emperor Sea Striders are the best known and largest organisms living on Darwin IV. They spend their lives within the confines of the amoebic sea, as this is the only source of energy on the planet capable of supporting such massive creatures. This species goes through an amazing metamorphosis at some point in its life. When they are born, they are known as nymphs, and somewhat resemble more compacted versions of the adults, but differ in that they are capable of powered flight. However, this ability is lost as they mature and develop a bipedal gait and begin feeding off of the amoebic sea. An enigmatic function of their physiology is their highly unusual feeding system. They possess two mouths, with each being located on their feet, effectively allowing them to eat anything they step on. With these, they shave off great chunks of the sea matrix for consumption. Identifying traits of the species are the mouthless crested head, flanked on each side by huge, orange, glowing, bioluminescent cavities, smaller, blue, glowing, bioluminescent lights, accenting their crest with multiple tentacles on their front, likely for communication, and two tails, one which is an actual tail, and the smaller, a phallus. The orange cavities on the sides of their head also attract the young strider nymphs, which orbit around the adult striders, likely for protection. Interestingly, strider nymphs are in fact prey to the amoebic sea itself, which extends in tentacle-like columns to catch them in mid-air. Eosapiens The Eosapien is the most advanced life form on Darwin IV, with an intelligence level comparable to that of early humans, such as Homo habilis. Eosapiens float in mid-air by using two bags filled with methane gas. They are fingers that they use to manipulate objects such as spears and create formations on the ground. They live in small tribes and hunt the other creatures on the planet. They hunt, and are hunted by, skewers. Fin Leg They have silvery skin and barrel-shaped bodies and appear to move about in groups. The Fin Leg's use of locomotion is quite strange. They have two fins in front of each other, yet each fin ends in two points, giving the appearance that the fin legs are quadrupedal. Fin legs steal pre-ripped scraps of jelly bladder plants ripped open by gel suckers. The Finned Snapper A strange Darwinian predator which uses a special appendage on its back to capture its favourite prey, the flying jet darters. It's mostly found in the vicinity of the pocket forests, where jet data hives build their nests. Although it's a rather large creature, its hunting arm alone is about 2 meters in length, the finned snapper is very lightly built and tremendously agile. 
It's also known to form small packs of usually six to eight individuals, which hunt together. Flip stick. These are tremendously tall, cylindrical creatures. Their signature locomotion involves leaping into the air through unknown means, given their size, where they will flip 180 degrees to land on their opposite end again. The 60 meter tall beings feed exclusively on microflyers, which would be the only thing that could support such a massive organism besides the amoebic sea. They feed this way by jamming the microflyers at sonar with an oscillating tone. They then scoop them up with their feeding scoops. Follow wings. Follow wings are small, violet-hued flyers, which usually can be found following the great and powerful skewer in order to scavenge from their kills. While related to the skewer with its 15 meter wingspan, they themselves are only 2 meters long. Forest Gulper Forest gulpers are large faunal organisms, which lure their prey into their mouths thanks to specialized scent glands. Once prey is captured, they will slowly digest it, alive. They are an example of Darwinian incomplete metamorphosis, with their larval stage capable of flight, but with the wings becoming vestigial throughout the growth towards maturity, becoming atrophied, useless appendages. Physically, they resemble gigantic green barrels, complemented by a thick serpentine tail. Forest Slider these are faunal organisms which have an interesting life cycle. When born, they are quadrupeds, yet as their rear skid hardens as they mature with age, their hind limbs shrivel and eventually fall off, transforming them into bipedal beings. Gel Suckers These are mantis-like organisms. They are hexapods, possessing six limbs. Four of these limbs are used for locomotion, while the final pair end in clawed arms. Gel suckers get their name from their tendency to feast on the flesh of the jelly bladder plant, which can be found growing in small groves on the outskirts of many pocket forests. This is where their clawed arms come in handy, used to rip the jelly bladder open, which is then followed by extending its proboscis into the organism in order to suck out its semi-solid flesh. Gill heads. These are small bipedal air sifters. They are the primary prey of the Eosapiens. They are one of the few species of Darwin IV which have separate sexes. Gourd trees, aka steeple gourds, plants native to Darwin IV. They are 150 feet tall plants, supported by stilt roots. Gourd trees are either hollow or spongy inside. They have to be for the stilt roots to support them. Grovebacks. Grovebacks are five stories tall and possess a 13 meter wide semicircular head. They have two enormous nostrils, with several more nostril-like openings covering the tops of their heads. While it is very likely that they have amazingly thick skin due to their enormous girth, they are still susceptible to attacks by fields of beach quills, which can bring them crashing down to their deaths. While surfaced, they, like many of the huge animals on the planet, depend upon the protein-rich and abundant food stock that is the tiny aerophytes. These aerophytes infrequently will perform periodic expansions of their swarms, which the Grovebacks' rare emergencies coincide with, as it is only during these times that they can easily support such beasts. When the microflyers dissipate, the Grovebacks will rebury themselves for another period of dormancy. Recent studies have suggested that they may in fact switch dietary habits during this time, transforming into lithovores who feed upon the nutrients in the soil through the skin of their underbody, and potentially through the many nostril-like orifices adorning their dorsal sides. Young Grovebacks have three legs, which, like other Darwinian creatures, will be replaced by a rear skid. Fully matured members of this species are large enough to support entire stands of Darwinian trees, which grow along their backs during their long periods of burial. These saplings form a commensal symbiotic relationship with the Grovebacks, injecting them with sugars, while the Grovebacks trade them water in return. 
This symbiosis is so perfect that advanced scouting drones have been unable to detect the Groveback beneath the ground. The Groveback might be a distant cousin to the keeled slider, since both species of creature walk on two front limbs and balance using a single rudder-like limb. Gyro Sprinter These are the fastest ground-dwelling organisms on Darwin IV, and can easily outrun many of their predators, such as the arrow tongues and prong heads. Evolved from quadrupedal fauna, their legs have become fused at the forelimbs over the course of millions of years, leaving them with literally one foot in front of the other. To counteract this, they have developed a set of hyper-developed halteres in order to keep in balance, which allows them to continue careening across their home biomes despite what would otherwise be considered an unfortunate deformity. Gyro sprinters are also extremely flexible and manoeuvrable, and can turn on a dime to elude most predators with ease. They have a relatively small, bony, almost skull-like cephalon at the end of their strong neck, which serves two functions. It not only houses the primary sensory organs of the beast, but also provides a sheath-like tip for its two-metre-long tongue which, like the arrow tongue, is used for eating. To aid in a lifestyle of such energetic activity, they have two hearts and nostrils which have been relocated to their shoulders in order to provide a more steady stream of oxygen. Bioluminescent patches dot their back. Hammerhead Vite Wing A flyer that has a crescent-shaped head on the end of a skinny neck. They are preyed upon by raybacks. Hook-tailed flyer Hook-tailed flyers are airborne organisms native to the pocket forests of Darwin IV. They use the hooks of their tails to hang from branches. They also have a methane-filled bladder on their back to supplement their wings. Hopper Cone These are small, pinkish-coloured, cone-shaped herbivores. They emerge from their nest tunnels in large numbers to feed on the remains of jelly bladder plants already ripped apart by the gel suckers. Ice Crawlers Ice crawlers are two-metre-long quadrupeds that resemble wood lice, and are nearly motionless and make comically flatulent noises when emerging from their sleep sacks. They inhabit the tundra regions of Darwin IV. Unless seen from below, ice crawlers show no signs of visible legs or even a head, as their whole body is protected by a thick, jointed carapace. A view from below reveals a mouth and four stumpy paws. Ice crawlers move at a speed of about 21 miles per hour, which is amazingly fast for a crawling animal. As they move, they shave the ice with their mouths, swallowing any frozen microorganisms and other nutrients, and leaving a very slick trail behind them. They go towards the areas where the ice is covered by colonies of tiny brown algae, as it provides them with a rich food source. Ice Dart These are small aerial creatures native to the subarctic tundra of Darwin IV. Like many organisms on the planet, these lighter-than-air beings use a gas-filled bladder to stay aloft, though they also sport a pair of long wings, likely to enable them to achieve greater speeds. They also have three hollow spikes, one on the frontal part of their body, one on the posterior part, and one on the ventral part. These spikes are used to absorb microscopic algae and other nutrients from the ice and snow, and also to cling to the ice in order to avoid being carried by snowstorms. Jet Darter The Jet Darter is one of Darwin IV's more bizarre aerial lifeforms. Jet darters are small, iridescent scavengers, feeding on the unfinished remains of any creature killed by another predator, such as the skewer, and have evolved a compact body that assumes a dart-like shape, hence their name. Surprisingly for an aerial species, they have no wings whatsoever to aid them in flight. Instead, they possess a biological version of a ramjet engine, complete with a turbine of bone and gristle, which is capable of launching them up to speeds of 40 miles per hour. When at rest, they use three legs in a tripod arrangement, which otherwise fold up during flight. They have an internal phallus in between their two rear legs. 
Jet darters live in polyhedral nests in the pocket forests and fear many predators such as electrophyte flora and finned snappers. They travel in schools, constantly changing their colours in relation to the direction of light. Keeled Slider Keeled sliders are large brown-hued faunal organisms indigenous to the muddy mountains. They rest upon kneeled arms, which they use to help them slide down muddy banks in their home environment. They are similar to other common stream organisms in terms of sexual reproduction, likely possessing just two genders, and possess special egg chambers to keep both the eggs and the young safe from harm. The keeled slider might be related to the grove back, as most species walk on two front limbs and balance using a single rudder-like limb near the end of the creature's body. Litteralope Litteralopes are 11 foot long creatures that feed on the amoebic sea. Their entire bodies give off a green glow in the darkness. One of the litteralopes main traits is the deceptive tail that's shaped like its head. This is used to further confuse predators as it keeps the attackers guessing which direction the litteralope will escape to. Microflyer This is the name applied to millions of tiny creatures that inhabit the skies of Darwin IV, feeding on the equally numerous aerophytes. Together, aerophytes and microflyers provide a nourishing food source for the massive aerial creatures found on the planet. Mummy Nest Flyer the mummy nest flyer is a small flying creature native to planet Darwin IV's northern tundra. It has a pair of fast-moving wings which allow it to hover like a hummingbird and a long, rigid tail which is bent downwards. The mummy nest flyer is so named because it makes its nest inside the mummified corpse of a much larger creature, dried out by the constant arctic wind. The nest's entrance is located where the corpse's head should be. Near it is a small bioluminescent appendage, which likely helps the flyer to find its way to the mummy nest. It's possible that the nest animal is actually still alive, and kept so by the flyer's nurture. Although their relationship is still unknown, it seems likely that the flyer brings food to its host, which in turn provides warmth, moisture, nourishment and shelter. While this could be explained as some strange form of symbiosis, Wayne Barlow also proposes a theory in which the flyer and the mummy nest were, at one point, part of the same organism. The portion corresponding to the creature's head develops wings and breaks free from the rest of its body, which is then mummified by the wind and becomes the nest. Peat Bladder The peat bladder is a life form native to the mountainous regions of Darwin Fall. They are described as pink ovoid creatures, which bury themselves upright in the boggy ground to keep their wrinkled skin moist. Their flabby lips stay visible, though exhaling mist, and producing a strange wheezing song which Barlow, the author, describes as amusing. Plaque Bark Trees These towering trees have regular side branches and sparse leaves, and grow on the scarce pocket forests located near small streams and rivers, the only bodies of liquid that can be found on Darwin IV. Their striker nuts produce a sound similar to those made by xylophones. Dwarf plaque barks have also been discovered. Plaque bark trees are home to the parasitic trunk suckers, which feed on the tree's nourishing sap, and the predatory dagger wrists, which prey on trunk suckers. Prairie Ram Prairie rams are ubiquitous liquivores native to Darwin IV. Unlike most terrestrial predators, they impale their prey through the thorax, which allows them quick access to the innards. This can become a hazard should the cephalon be locked in the rib cage. Prismalope a tripedalian of Darwin's plains, prismalopes often travel in herds. The first thing one notices about this creature is its massive prism-shaped head. Though it appears ungainly, it houses the prismalope's grasping tentacles, which it uses to capture small prey. This fast-breeding creature is preyed upon by a multitude of predators, both terrestrial and airborne. The prismalope hunts a flyer that is protected by the butcher tree. Pronghead Prongheads are a species of agile, luminous, well-muscled pack hunters, filling a similar niche to the wolf from Earth. 
They are named for the three hollow prongs which protrude from their face, acting as tubes to siphon liquids from their prey. Digestive fluids are pumped into their victims through a pair of tubes on the sides of their foot spurs. A larger central tube is used to ingest this now liquefied food. They exhibit highly developed social behaviour, working as a team, stalking their prey from all directions in an attempt to surround it. The Rayback A biped alien with a roughly dinosaur-shaped body. Like almost all animals on Darwin IV, it has no eyes. Its wedge-shaped head is equipped with a sonar mechanism for detecting its surroundings, however, and it also has a powerful dagger-like proboscis. Also, it has a long line of red biolites along its back. Its most distinguishable feature is the four tall spines that protrude from its back, from which its name derives. They bear the general appearance of both an arrow tongue and a bolt tongue, although whether this is due to a close genetic relationship or due to their similar predatory niches is up for debate. Like all Darwinian carnivores, it is a liquivore, feeding by inserting its dagger-like tongue into its victim, pumping in digestive fluids that dissolve the victim's internal organs, and then sucking out the fluid. However, it is preyed upon by Eosapiens. The Ricochetal Saltator, a monopedalian, native to Darwin IV. Rhyme Runner the Rhyme Runner is a one-legged animal from the polar regions of Darwin IV. Supported by only one leg, the Rhyme Runner hops across its arctic home like a kangaroo. It eats only aerophytes and other microscopic airborne organisms. At the front of its head, the Rhyme Runner sports an umbrella-like organ. This organ, suspended by thin neural cables, is a sophisticated sonar system along with a simple and atrophying eye. Rugos Floater Rugos floaters are heavily wrinkled, ocean, sunfish-like inhabitants of Darwin IV that float in the air. They feed on aerophytes and microflyers. During spawning season, they trail eggs behind their fins by filaments and reduce their crescent shape when spawning is complete. When threatened, they release a cloud of particles from their black, eye-like appendages to fragment its sonar image, but this doesn't stop skewers from attacking them. The skewers do not feed on the floater, but merely pierce its methane-filled bags, causing the floater to fall to its death for sport. Sackback The sackbacks live along the shore, or edge, of the sprawling amoebic sea. This periphery is a bleak and inhospitable region, and as the margins of the massive sea colony recedes, it has left a flattened landscape, which at one time may have been considered the amoebic sea's floor. It is within these featureless wastes that one may find the sackback, roaming upon its awkward tripedal gait. The species gets its name from the sack that adorns the male's back. Their kind shows significant sexual dimorphism, with this physical feature only being the tip of the iceberg. This sac is used to store pre-digested food from the amoebic sea, which it later will feed to a group of females who live in a group called a harem. While the male lives on the surface and walks on their three legs, females instead dig tombs in which they will bury themselves, with only their mouth and tentacle seeing the light of day afterwards. The males will then travel between one harem to the next, and at each he will stop and either share his sack-stored food with inert mates through the proboscis that sticks above the terrain, or mate with them. This mating is considered one of the more bizarre procreation rituals on the entire planet. Skewer Skewers are monstrous flying animals, possessing a wingspan of approximately 15 meters, and when combined with their sleek body structure and wide range of habitat, proves them to have no rivals more potent than they. They are the largest aerial predators on all of Darwin IV, and are both prey and predator to the planet's near sapient species, the Eosapiens. Even arrow tongues are not beyond vulnerability to their swooping attacks. Their species generally travel in mated pairs, but can be found less frequently in small, flying pods, using the planet's strong air currents to help migrate them from pole to pole. 
Skewers are reminiscently jet-like in shape, and like presumably all other predators on their world, hunt by sonar. They hunt in small packs, and use a huge, curved, hollow nasal lance protruding from their heads, which they use to impale and disembowel their prey. Once prey has been impaled, they go into a steep climb to offset the shift in the centre of gravity caused by the impaled prey. They then proceed to inject their sometimes still living prey with digestive enzymes, as any other liquivore would do, and soon begin sucking the corpse's fluids out of its now lifeless body. Each skewer will alternate between feeding and dropping their prey, letting other members of their pod feed as well. This performance appears to be almost playful, and does not stop until the prey is finally completely drained of all its fluids. Skewers have been known to kill for sport, and even for fun. The shriveled husks of such victims can be found virtually everywhere upon Darwin IV's surface. Their species manoeuvre through the air by propelling themselves through the use of internally created methane gas, which is then combusted within the four jet pods located on its wings, in a way again reminiscent of modern-day jet-propelled aircraft on Earth. This is coupled with the movements of their wings, they do not flap, but squeeze, similar to accordions, shifting their shape in order to shift flight patterns. With these two adaptations, they are capable of travelling at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour, making them likely the fastest species on Darwin IV, as well as the largest aerial predator. Spade Nose the spade nose is a quadrupedal organism indigenous to Darwin IV, which lives in the local forests. They are named for their blue-hued, spade-like nose. They are common prey to the forest gulpers. They have small mouths located on the top of their shovel-like snouts, resembling a blowhole on earthly aquatic mammals. They shovel up soil with their snout, then tip their heads back so it falls into their mouths. They then filter out small invertebrates with a small bladder in their throat. They then inject unwanted material, dirt, stones, etc., through another small hole in the bottom of the throat, and consume the small animals. Spring Wing The spring wing is a winged animal native to Darwin IV, with an appearance reminiscent of the mythological hippogriff. It springs itself off cliffs, gliding with the alpine updrafts to reach its destination. Their relatives, the crag springers, are flightless and leap across ravines and chasms. Instead of mouths, they have feeding grooves which eat the scraps of plant matter the animal scrapes off the cliff. Stone Mime Stone mimes are half a metre long and inhabit the tundra regions of Darwin IV. They have an oval shaped body, four pairs of thin, unjointed legs, and a pair of antenna. Like their name suggests, they are able to retract their legs and shorten the antenna in order to mimic a small rock. Stripe Wing Stripe wings are two metre tall, vaguely wyvern like creatures, named for the beautiful bluish stripes on their wings. They are found in large numbers in the area encircling the amoebic sea. Despite having wings, this species is flightless. They mostly spend the days resting upon the sea's surface, occasionally extending their proboscis to feed on the organic matrix. At night, however, the creatures become astoundingly agitated, hopping around and covering great distances in a crazy fashion. The reason for this behaviour is still unclear, but one possibility is that they could be pursuing and feeding on hordes of microflyers. Cymet Cymets are bipedal herbivores. Their symmetry may have evolved to confuse predators. Thornback The thornback is a tripedal herbivore. It has a large thorn on its back, shaped like a shark fin. The thornback is hunted by many other larger predators, such as the rayback and the arrow tongue. The transalpine floater A whale-like floater native to Darwin IV. Their bodies are composed of a main gas bag at the front, trailing a vertical fin from the top, and a bony carapace from the rear. A large set of narrow wings hang on either side of the carapace, and two halters are suspended under the gas bag. Trunk Sucker The Trunk Sucker is a small, ray-like creature that glides through Darwin IV's forests and clings to plaque bark trees, sucking their nutrient-rich sap. 
Similar to Earth's woodpeckers, they fly, they land on the trunk of a tree, prop themselves up with their tails, and take fluid from the tree. Tube worms, creatures native to the tundra regions. They seem to form clusters, but whether they are sessile organisms or simply build tubes to live in is still unclear. Tundra slider, a subspecies of arctic sedge slider. The tundra plow, a large, remarkable creature which inhabits the northern tundra of Darwin IV. These three-metre-long herbivores keep their bodies partially burrowed in the snow-covered ground, and slowly drag themselves across with the help of two strong, robust arms. As they move, they leave deep, several-miles-long furrows in the ground surface. Their average speed is 40 metres per hour. The subterranean portion of a tundra plough's body resembles a tough, organic snow plough, and contains three pairs of mouth grooves, specialised structures used to collect the snow, filtering moisture and nutrients. While the creature's nostrils are located on the above-ground parts of their bodies, the mouth is placed below the ground, and at the end of an extendable proboscis which is used to grab plants and pull them from underneath. The result is that the nutrient-rich plants appear to magically disappear from the creature's path once it approaches them. Tundra Roma This is a four-legged animal native to the tundra regions. Unusually for Darwin IV's fauna, they have two distinct sexes. The male has a crest on its head, and a fatter tail, while the female has a void in its back. Unnamed Flyer it is speculated that this flyer is the other sex of the butcher tree. They are fed upon by prismalopes. Unnamed green flyer. These elliptical light green flyers are native to the plains of Darwin IV. They are likely related to disc flyers. Sometimes they may be found in small groups. Unnamed monopedalian. Hardly anything is known about this species. It is likely related to the Rhyme Runner, as it shares the same sonar structure. Unths. These are tundra-inhabiting creatures with long, asymmetrical tusks, the right being longer than the left. They are named for the sound they make when they take a step. These animals are social creatures, travelling across the vast tundra in large herds. Although they only have one gender, unths still fight each other for the right to mate. After the duel, both creatures release pheromones that initiate the reproductive process. It is assumed they communicate via echolocation, like most creatures on Darwin IV. Ima The Ima are a sapient extraterrestrial civilization characterized by a strong sense of conservationism and protection toward alien ecologies. They made first contact with humans in the early 23rd century, finding an Earth devastated by pollution and ecological decay. As decided by the Interspecies Accord of 2231, the Immer have since taken responsibility to manage Earth's biosphere recovery projects. Little else has been revealed about the Immer, other than that their technology includes faster than light travel, and their language is made out of whistles and harmonics, with rapid clicking sounds as their form of laughter. Following the discovery of the Darwin binary system, the Immer have been the main founders and developers of an Immer human joint mission to explore the environments of Darwin IV, closely but passively studying the native biosphere and taking extreme care to prevent unnecessary interfering with the native life. The Darwin IV expedition, which took place from 2358 through 2361, resulted in the discovery of dozens of native species, including a sapient, although Paleolithic race, known as the Eosapiens. Since that, the entire Darwinian system has been deemed a preserved area by the Ima, and is under constant monitoring from their robotic probes. The physique of an Ima is roughly humanoid, with a distinct head and four arms. The slightly pointy head has two nostrils at the top, covered by a transparent bladder. Their two eyes are relatively separate from one another, each possessing a dark pupil surrounded by an amber iris. The only remaining facial features are two horizontal ridges, with one of them being, presumably, the mouth. The hands at the end of their forearms look similar to those of humans, except that they are symmetrical. Their fingers are much thinner, and lack fingernails or claws. 
their two middle fingers have their proximal phalanges fused with their two index fingers. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video then please hit the like button and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. Also, please don't forget to leave a comment and share this video with anyone you feel would enjoy it. I'd also like to thank my generous patrons and channel members who can be seen here. This has been the BewareCast, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.